Well, good morning. Just for the record, I had seen cows before. <laughs> but maybe not that many of them around the schoolhouse, okay? Well, welcome back to the start of another school year. To all of our new employees, welcome to the Union family. It is so great to see all of you dressed in your spirit attire representing uh, your schools and the U. Your energy is indeed infectious. A special shout out to all the middle school teachers and parents. Hang in there as the struggle is real. <laughs> Been there, done that. But in all seriousness, a special shout out to all of you for making this past school year a success. Our district's mission of graduating 100% of our students, college and career ready, is challenging the status quo as it relates to public education. We are proving that if you create the right conditions, all students can learn. And we are riding a great wave, and I'm excited to share this time with you to reflect, to celebrate, and to highlight the focus for this school year. This is just not another school year. This is a special one as we take the time to celebrate Union Centennial, 100 years of serving students in our community. The continued success of this organization stems in large part to those who came before us, those who were courageous and fearless in helping us create the union of today. Those who guided this organization through unprecedented growth, economic uncertainties, and major building projects, and systems and cultural changes in helping us form what we call the Union Way, excellence in all that we do. We continue to stand on the shoulders of those giants, and we are honored today to have two of our former superintendents with us this morning. They are legends in their own right. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming home Dr. Wesley Jarman and Dr. Kathy Burden. Dr. Timothy Jenny was not able to be with us this morning, but he sends his best wishes. Thank you both for your leadership and your many years of service to this district. Your legacy continues. I have to say this, I'm going off script a little bit, and these folks hate that. But this is a special day for me because Dr. Wesley Jarman hired me as a young teacher and coach, and then Dr. Burden hired me as an administrator. And so I thank you all for taking, I don't know what the heck you saw on me, but thank you for taking a risk. Appreciate that. <laughs> in less than a week, parents will be sending us their greatest blessing in this world. They will, as you all know and recall, be a bit concerned. Parents have always been worried about handing their children over to school. The truth is, as parents, we worry about a lot of things, even outside of school. But in terms of schooling, parents mainly hope their child will like their teacher, they'll like their bus driver, they'll like their classmates, like their school, love learning, enjoy lunch, fit in, feel safe, trust us, all in the hope they want to come back the next day only to experience these things all over again. And I know what you're thinking. This is not easy. It's not. But each of you, in your respective roles, provides our kids with an amazing, dynamic, and supportive learning experience. They not only long for each school day, it provides them with the academic skills, the dispositions, and hope they must have in fulfilling their life, dreams, and aspirations. School is no longer just a, a rehearsal. What our children become and what they go on to do in the future has everything to do with the experiences they go through in the present. That is why each of you is so important to our 100% graduation college and career ready goal. Our public schools are about the only institution left where students and families from different cultural values, wealth and ethnicity 
can come together. And universal education continues to be the primary contributor to an equal and democratic society. W.E. Du Bois offered up this inspiration as to its importance. Of all the civil rights this country has fought for, the right to learn is the most important. Every single child must have this right. Well, this past year, we graduated 1,287. You're going to love this. To date, we have, I think, 57 left, only 57. And we're going to harass those kids until they don't even know what that word means, until we get them all graduated. But 1,287 students is quite a number. It really is considering Union's first graduating class consisted of just three students. Two girls and one boy. <laughs> I bet prom was interesting that year, huh? <laughs> it gives a whole new meaning to double dating, I guess, doesn't it? <laughs> I just threw that one in there, sorry. <laughs> but regardless of our size, Union seems to have always maintained a sharp focus on our students and doing what is best for them in our community. This uncommon vision, not bound by time, continues to distinguish Union in myriad ways, and it only seems fitting that we would adopt it as this year's theme. I assure you this uncommon vision is making a positive difference in the lives of our students, our families, our community, and our organization and state. Being in common in our vision means that we are unapologetically, relentlessly student-centered. It also means that we are courageous in our attempts to equalize students' chances for success, regardless of one's income, demographics, zip code, gender, or ethnicity. It also means that we pursue excellence and equality in all that we do. Excellence and equity, excuse me, equity, cannot be mutually exclusive, as excellence without equity is called privilege. Our strength, therefore, is in our unity of purpose, our uncommon vision, regardless of circumstance. You know, even with the historic increase in state funding for schools these past two years, thanks in large part to your efforts, we will still face economic challenges around our operational funding. This area still has not been made whole after 10 years of funding cuts, but we must and we will continue to hold our elected officials responsible for fulfilling the promise of making Oklahoma a top 10 state. I am optimistic because this I know to be a fact. You cannot become a top 10 state unless you invest heavily in our educators and provide our schools with resources from technology to classroom offerings and student supports. Equally concerning and one area that we must pay close attention to is the proliferation of these for-profit virtual schools. They seem to be growing in epic proportions. That was bad. But it's true. Our state should not allow, nor can we continue to afford, these for-profit virtual schools to make millions on the backs of our students in our schools. One of the ways that we plan to, ca to uh, counter these for-profit virtual threats is to level the playing field by creating our own fully online virtual program. Under the leadership of, I know what you're laughing at. <laughs> Thank you, Jamie Ward, for that slide. <laughs> Under the leadership of, Union, of, of Gart Morris, Union's Executive Director of Instructional Technology, we are set to launch our very first fully online virtual program, Union Virtual, this semester. This will allow our students 
The choice of full virtual supported by our amazing teachers, our counselors and administrators, while also being able to take advantage of our stellar co-curricular programs. Despite the funding challenges and threats to our work, you still can take comfort in the fact that union's funding, our employee compensation and outstanding benefits remain one of the strongest in the state. And we are grateful to our legislature and our incredible Board of Education for the 3.9% raise along with your 5% stipend. Thank you all very much. <laughs> Uncommon indeed. Uncommon indeed. Our board and this administration remain committed to keeping the, your salary and benefits strong, and we will continue to work hard on your behalf. That is our pledge to you. We have a paradox in education pushing academics or personal competencies. A good education involves both, and it is absolutely essential that we provide a balanced, a sensitive, and a humane and tolerant form of education. But the challenge before us is to graduate all kids with the knowledge, the skills, and the dispositions to embrace an increasingly complex world on their own terms. That is why we continually evaluate our structures, our programs, and our strategies. We must at times be reinvented and renegotiate through dialogue with our community and by listening and being more attentive to our students' needs. This is the only way we will stay relevant in a vastly changing world. It's the only way we stay worthy of our students. We flourish or die based on our adaptability. And our strategic plan with the input from our students, our staff, and community continues to guide our work and challenges us to reframe how we think about serving our students and our families. This is already happening through committees like the Superintendent Student Advisory Council. This group has presented a lot of challenges for us to think about. You can only imagine. Like making sure we keep the South Road at the high school open to free admission to events for the Scottish skins. <laughs> they really do exist. To having larger food portions because they really love the quality of our food. To ha yeah, okay, I agree. To having an ACT prep for all students. They also recommended and made happen changes to unions valedictorian and salutatorian recognition and they challenges, challenged us to change the name of our ninth grade center to the Union High School Freshman Academy. Get this, out of their mouths, to ensure that students and families understand that it is indeed part of their high school experience. Who would have thought? Since students are the bedrock of our existence, it only makes sense that we listen to their ideas in order to create the most viable learning environment possible. We also ventured into some tough decisions this past year. We made it through not only redistricting, we managed to recreate what we hope will be better start and end times for our schools. <laughs> I didn't get an applause on that one. <laughs> <laughs> and through much analysis, changes were made in order to create a more age-appropriate, um, more elementary-like, effective and positive learning environment for our students. Change is not easy, but easy rarely makes for better change. And even after one year of our new five-year strategic plan, we are seeing some positive scores in our reading and math. Thank you for this. Increasing these scores across the district and across all grade levels will continue to be an academic priority for us. But this is what we know about learning. It is indeed a personal process, and it is certainly not a sprint. It's a marathon. And we are proving through our graduation rates that regardless of circumstance or demographics or initial language barriers, students will succeed ac academically and graduate if they just stay the course with us.
Our focus on early childhood, community schools, STEM and college and career readiness has garnered us national attention from the likes of the Wall Street Journal, District Administration, NPR, and Linda Darling Hammond's Learning Policy Institute. While our strategic plan guides our work in teaching and learning, organizational operations and efficiencies, and culture, our results stem from a steadfast belief that together we make a difference. Another area that we must pay close attention to is the mental health of our students. Our country has a growing mental health issue, and Oklahoma, as recently noted in the Tulsa world, has one of the highest populations of students living in trauma. Mental health and behavioral disorders are diagnosed now in one out of seven children ages two through eight. And the average age of depression is now 14.5 compared to 29 in 1978. Trauma has many faces and can be a serious impediment to a student's ability to learn. Unless we begin to work with a different mindset. When working with students, the question should not be, what is wrong with that student? The question should be, what has happened to that student? And the research is emerging. And schools that incorporate school-based social and emotional learning strategies have shown significant academic performance while reducing the number of behavioral problems. This is why we must continue to focus on our social and emotional learning efforts across all grade levels. Union's learning model centered on literacy, cognitive capacity, engagement, and social emotional learning provides a basic framework framework for making sure that our students possess what has been identified as the top 10 skills. Today's students must acquire the skill of complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, active listening, service orientation, negotiation, and cognitive flexibility. A student's acquisition of these skills will take time. But I believe there's no better place in public education to acquire these skills than Union Public Schools. And I know I speak for the 32,000 plus parents within our community that their students are most fortunate to have you working on their behalf. The excellence displayed in your work is most impressive. I know our student and organization's success is attributed to a tremendously dedicated staff. And it is an honor to recognize two of our employees who exemplify this excellence. Congratulations again to Union Support Employee of the Year, Ellen Thiessen. <laughs> what a jewel. And, and congratulations also to our Teacher of the Year, Lisa Schatz. And speaking of excellence, Union's award-winning fine arts program continues to flourish and gar garner national recognition. The Renegade Regiment, under the leadership of Charles Passaro, recently accepted the invitation to march in the 2020 Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. <laughs> New York, here we come. And this year's musical, Matilda, will be sure to impress. And Union's orchestra program under the direction of Paula Surface continues to see record enrollment and success. Give her a hand. And this past year, we celebrated 40 years of incredible youth art, of the incredible youth arts program. Let me assure you that our community believes in you and our mission. This past year, the Union Schools Education Foundation Thanks in large part to Executive Director Shea Ludwig. And the amazing Colson Siddiqui. Raised a record $235,000, bringing the endowment to a total of $1.8 million. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
And congrats to also to our national educate uh, national child nutrition. Uh, not our national, excuse me. She's our child nutrition dietitian and specialist who has received national recognition um, in the Food Service Director magazine as a national rising star. Congratulations, Lauren Bradley. I could tell you some funny stories about our parents coming to some of your back to school events and about the quality of our food. And I'm not going to do that. Could be a little embarrassing for me to say some of the adjectives they used that are in such a good way about how good your food is. Fantastic. Let's use that word. Fantastic. And speaking of stars, I continue to be impressed by our college and career team as they are un unashamedly unashamedly relentless in their pursuit of preparing and connecting our students to college and careers. They are making the Dr. Kathy Burden College and Career Center come to life. And congratulations to Union's Finance Division. Not only do they ensure that we maintain physical responsibility, they were awarded, which I might add, the first ever, first time ever, the ASBO International Budget MBA Pathways Award. Also with this award, Becky Byers received the School Finance Operations Certification, becoming only the second CP in the state to receive this recognition. Congratulations, <laughs> Becky. And congrats also to our very own Dr. Trish Williams, our CFO. She was named the School Business Official of the Year by the Oklahoma ASBO. Congratulations, Dr. Williams. Engagement in school is an antecedent to school academic success. Our coaches and athletic department continue to make us proud as they build champions of character. While we certainly enjoy our many, many, many state championships, we are equally grateful and we equally value the development of our student athletes as leaders both on and off the field. Congratulations to Union Varsity Palm under the, under the direction of Brittany Frisky for their 2018 state championship. Congratulations. <laughs> and congratulations to Coach Jerry Peace on being named a 2019 NHSSACA, wow, <laughs> Softball Coach of the Year finalist. Also to Coach Tyler Ashley on being named the 2018 USTA Oklahoma High School Coach of the Year and the 2018-19 Oklahoma Tennis Coaches Association Girls Coach of the Year. Congratulations. <laughs> and under the direction and leadership of Lisa Witcher, we are blurring the lines of K-12 and higher education in the best interest of our students. We welcomed our third early college high school cohort this year with 60 students, many of them first generational college students. We now have more than 130 students in this first ever state pilot program. And this we know, their chances of college success will be significantly increased due to the early college high school experience. Even after just two years, the program is showing great promise for many of our underrepresented students, and we hope to continue to pilot and make this a statewide initiative within time. And congratulations to our Native American program for being recognized as an exemplary program this past spring by the National Johnson O'Malley Program. Congratulations to them. Nancy Petticord was the Region 3A Teacher of the Year and recently retired and smiling way too much these days. Jackie White was recognized as the National Educator of the Year. Congratulations to you all. <laughs> and speaking of first, Union Public Schools is the first school in the nation to launch blockchain-based credentials. Todd Borland, our Executive Director of Technology, was instrumental in making this happen. Starting this summer, students were able to get, their digital, uh, get a digital copy of their diplomas and transcripts. They may, uh, this may not seem like a big deal, 
But unless you recall how many times our students or even your own kids would say, get this, I don't remember where I put it. (laughs) Now all of their academic transcripts, their resumes, and their diplomas are now stored in the cloud. And congratulations also to our amazing communications department team. Under the leadership of communications guru, Chris Payne. Not only do they put together incredible videos, communications and managed media requests extremely well. They were successful in bringing up a new website over the summer that will be more intuitive and more stable. What a great team. Year two of our five-year, uh, five-year series bond will really also begin to impact student learning as well. For certain in grades 9 through 12, because all of them will now be equipped with a laptop and have access to Wi-Fi through a grant from T-Mobile. And thanks to our technology team, more than 3,700 laptops, new laptops, are now ready to be deployed. And we will also see the opening of Union's Innovation Lab and many new curriculum items in order to augment our literacy and math initiatives. Sure, let's give them a call. And Union's first. From concept to completion, Community School Ochoa, (laughs) elementary, is now complete and fully ready to serve our students and our families. And of course, the big one. See what you started, Dr. Jarman. (laughs) Our 43-year-old stadium will come down at the end of the football season and be replaced by a state-of-the-art facility that will serve our students, our families, and our community well for, I'm certain, many, many decades to come. You will also see new computers at Bovers, Peters, Grove, and Ochoa, and the high school. And I know you're going to like this news. The internet has been upgraded. It's been upgraded. It's upgraded. (laughs) It's going to be eight times faster than last year. There we go. And last but not least, a special thanks to our warehouse and distribution center employees. They received what I've been told and delivered record numbers of food, textbooks, computers, supplies, paper, and equipment over the summer. And like so many of our support employees from transportation, child nutrition, grounds, security, operations, EDP, and office personnel, they have been very busy preparing for the start of the school. This we know. We could not do this without you. Thank you all very much. There are so many amazing things happening at Union, and I am so proud and honored to be associated with such a caring and a dedicated staff and organization. I believe those who serve this organization in the future will also be equally grateful, just as we are today, for the courage possessed in us in providing a world-class education for all. Every great achievement in this world began with a vision. A vision such an achievement in motion. And as with any great quest or venture, you cannot get caught up in the bigness of it all. You have to stay focused and unyielding in the pursuit. History chronicles both the timid and the bold. People like Lincoln, Mother Teresa, and Dr. King. The bold seize the moment and they capture our hearts and souls as we live out our own lives. 
They demonstrate that obstacles and difficulties disappear in the face of unwavering courage. They provide a beacon for us to follow. When President Kennedy publicly announced that we were going to the moon 50 years ago, there were many who doubted that we were going to be able to do that and doubted our country's ability to accomplish such an audacious feat. After all, it had never been done before and the difficulties too steep. The point is a vision, or should I say an uncommon vision was cast. Soon our country rallied behind this vision and proved that when we work together for a common goal, anything is possible. Union's mission to graduate 100% of our students, college and career ready, is also audacious, bold, and even courageous. It is an uncommon vision, certainly worth fighting for. This too is not easy and filled with many difficulties. But we are creating conditions and supports necessary for us to get there. We must continue to provide hope when all hope seems lost. Believe in our kids when they stop believing in themselves. And continue to show that public education is a right and a rightful thing. And like the bold before us, your courage and bold convi convictions will seize the moment. Collectively speaking, each of you are capturing the hearts and the souls of our students and families as they too live out their dreams for a better life. We must continue to stay focused and continue to believe in our uncommon vision for it will be a wonderful thing. I wish you all an amazing school year.